today I'm going to show you my process for how I have created over 200 tutorials in Final Cut Pro. The first thing I always do is go up and create a new library and I just locate the folder that I want to put it in, T209. I use a numbering system so I can quickly find the different projects I have created across all of my hard drives. I call it the same thing, T209 Mercury Effect and then we'll push save. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and import some footage here. I'll look up my screen. Now I haven't added any music, graphics, sound effects, or anything like that. So we're just going to select the screen and import that. I'm gonna push shift Z so I can see both my screen and my face cam. Now that I have my footage in, I'm going to select both of them, right click and throw them into a new multicam clip. And I just call this tutorial. From there, I'm gonna leave my resolution at 4K and set my frame rate to 60 frames per second. Then I'll push okay. I like to record my face at at 24 frames per second so it looks extra cinematic but then I like to record the screen at 60 frames per second so that you can really smoothly see exactly where the mouse is moving to. It also makes animations look really really good in Final Cut so that is why I do it that way. Now that I've got my multicam all set up I'm gonna push command n to create a new project and we'll just call it the same thing t209 mercury effect and we can go ahead and leave the frame rate at 60 frames per second. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the tutorial here on the timeline, and then we can double click into this multicam to see both video elements. From here, I have a lot of presets that I've set up. So if I just look up the word tutorial in my effects, I can see that I've got my tutorial screen capture. So what that preset does is it shrinks my video down 90% and it also adds a drop shadow. From there, I need to correct my video. Now I just recently started recording everything in S-Log3. So what I'm going to do is look up my S-Log correction and apply that. And what that correction has is a color wheels layer above the custom LUT, so I don't always have to do that because generally when you're correcting footage, you need to adjust it from the color wheels above everything before you go in to apply your LUT. Then I'll go back to my tutorial here and look up teal tutorials and apply that. So now I've got this teal and orange look going and things are looking pretty nice. After that, we need to go in and actually fix all of my audio, which is recorded through my screen. Now I'm recording both the computer audio and also my voice audio. So we need to take a look at all the multi-channel audio that's in there. To do that, you can select it, go up to clip and select open clip. So I've got all my keyboard clicks and mouse clicks here in the top layer. So I'm just gonna select both of those, right click, select assign audio roles and select effects. Then I'm gonna push option G to throw them into a compound clip and I'll just call them effects. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my dialogue tracks, option G and call it dialogue. And then from there, I go over to my audio effects and click and drag my tutorial voiceover, which I apply onto the compound clip. It brings up this window asking if I want to apply it to all the layers and I do so I'll just select dialogue and just like that we should be good to go. Editor Dylan here. I am filming this on my iPhone so it feels extra spontaneous but really this is the third time that I've had to do this. I forgot to mention why it's so important to use audio rolls. Now by using these audio rolls later on in your video if you happen to need to change the volume on either your audio tracks for your computer or your dialogue tracks you can do so by expanding audio components. This gives you individual control over each track, which you can adjust the volume on and you can clearly see with a visual color what you are adjusting. Now the rough overview of how I process my voice is I add some basic EQ. I've got the 32 hertz all the way down because you can't even hear that. The 512 I drop down a bit and the 4 I drop down a bit. That adds some extra clarity. And then just barely on the top I bring up the high end. Now there's probably a lot of audio engineers out there that are screaming at me because this sounds terrible. It sounds terrible. But this is what has worked for me and on my speakers it sounds fine. So that's all that matters to me I guess. Um, once I've done that I also applied the loudness filter onto my scene and I just drag up the amount and uniformity a bit just to add some uniformity to the voice so nothing's really peaking but nothing's too quiet. And then at the bottom I apply the voiceover enhancement compressor and I leave that exactly as it is. The amount's at 50. It's the punchy male voiceover and that sounds pretty good. So that is how I process my voice. Now that we've got everything set up we can back out and we can completely back out of the multicam. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have the audio from my screen coming through not my camera because my camera sounds terrible. So we're going to push command shift 7 to get the multicam editor. In here we're going to select the audio only mode and push option and click on the screen recording and what that has done is it has set the screen recording as the main audio source but it doesn't create a cut like most multicams do because when I click it creates a cut we don't want to create a cut. We just want to change the audio 
over. So by pushing option, it just swaps it without cutting it. Now that our audio is set, we can go back to video only mode. And now I can just push one and two to create cuts on my video without needing to click either of the multicam edits. I'm gonna push command control one to actually get rid of the browser. And now is the process of where I go through and trim up all of the fat of the video to get it nice and concise, to take out any mistakes. This process can take quite a bit, but we'll go ahead and speed on through it. So the first thing I do is find the intro. Usually it's always the last take. Sometimes if I felt like there was a really good take early on, I'll remember that and go select that one. But for the most part, it's usually the last take. So I've got the last take here. I'm gonna push option left bracket and trim the video up to that point. So we've got that basic intro. I'm gonna push C and I created C as a custom keyboard shortcut to create a cut. B gives me the blade tool because sometimes I want one or the other. And then we can also go in and create these two cuts really quickly, select it, and then I actually set up a keyboard shortcut on my mouse. Um, I guess it's a mouse board shortcut. And when I push that middle button, it goes ahead and deletes it. So this process can take quite some time. I'm just gonna go ahead, trim up everything in the timeline, and then we'll get back to the second part of my workflow. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the whole video all completely chopped up here. It's looking pretty good. I've got the flow down. The next step that I do is I actually add in all of my keyboard shortcuts and different graphic animations. And rather than rebuild this every single time I create a new project, I just open up an old project where I know I've got some uh, keyboard shortcuts shown. I'm pretty sure I've got one here in T208. So we'll go ahead, open that up. And I just find the tutorial file here. And we'll just look down here at the bottom. We'll see that I've got a keyboard shortcut right here. So I'll go ahead and select that command C. Then we'll just jump back into the other project and find where I've added this marker. And I'll push command V to paste it. And then we can just shift that over a bit. Great. And then from there, I'll go ahead and just adjust each of these to the proper keyboard shortcut. And I'm actually going to push command shift seven to get rid of the viewer there. And we can shrink this down a bit. Command control one to get rid of that left side. And we can even get rid of the effects browser here. And normally when I'm going through, I like to push M to add a marker like right here when I have a keyboard shortcut in place. So I'll go ahead and just continue to find all of the keyboard shortcuts and paste them in and then edit them to be the proper keyboard shortcut. Okay, so I have all my keyboard shortcuts in place. Luckily, this video didn't have very many, but I also always like to use this at the very beginning for my title card. So I'll just go to the very beginning, push Command V to paste it, and I'll just type in my name. The next thing I like to do is get a basic background in. So I'll push Command Control 1. We'll jump into our generators, and I've created all these minimalist backgrounds. I actually have these as a Patreon download as well. The next thing that I do after that is add in all of my zooms. So I go in and add my Pro Zooms plugin. Shameless plug! So we'll go ahead and go to my titles and we'll look up the pro zooms effect here. And I'm going to have links to all the plugins that I use to actually create my tutorials down below. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing here. First things first, open up Apple motion. If you don't get the project browser, I like to add a little zoom in on the window here. So it's legible and N today we are going now it sounds like there's a weird audio thing. So I'm going to right click and expand audio components and find out what's going on here. Um, I believe that's control option S. There we go. That's a keyboard shortcut I need to use more often. Um, let's go ahead and maybe fade that out. And today we are going to select, and I think we could shorten up the time between these two as well. So let's go ahead and shrink that up and N. Today we are going, perfect. Okay, so sometimes as I'm going throughout, I'll go ahead and make those quick adjustments because it's really hard for me to do full passes every single time when I'm making like a 20 minute tutorial. So I try and do it as I'm going if I happen to catch them. But that main process at the beginning is just trimming it down and starting to add in the graphics. And then I start kind of listening to exactly what's being said. If something's doubled up, I'll take that out as well. So we are going in to zoom in on that tool there. So I'll go ahead and get my pro zooms tool and we'll shrink it up. So it's just on the screen here, somewhere in there. Select the shape tool and we're just gonna create. And here's the end of that. So I'll put option right bracket to trim now that, that down. I cut out the car. I'm gonna go to my inspector and disable the outline. So we just have this white shape. So in here, this is where I would use something like markup to actually draw attention to that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the loop tool apply that over the outline button there 
And let's go ahead and get rid of the curvature, just make it a square there. And we can shrink it down a bit and get it looking pretty nice. So this is a really great plugin from FX Factory and they just updated it. It's got some amazing features. Um, I like the coloring to all be on brand. So I've got this color swatch here with all my colors. I've got that orange going on. So we'll just select that orange and we can go ahead and set that box to be just like so. Go to my inspector and we want it to animate in. So we'll go ahead and drag up the animation time on these inspector and disable the outline. So we just have, and then we can go ahead and Outline, let the so animation end this white shape now that I have that animation I'm gonna go ahead and add in the sound effects So I like the cork sound for those kind of zoom ins So we'll go ahead and look up cork and here we've got these bottle cork sounds. I'll just drop one in specter and Perfect. It's a little bit too loud. So I'll push control and minus to drop the audio level on that I might slow it down to command R make it a little bit slower because the zoom in is a little slow specter and somewhere in there Spectre and perfect that's looking good outlines. and then I like to just reverse that for the end of it so I've set up a keyboard shortcut for command control R and that reverses stuff line this up with the end tap this perfect sometimes I'll add in a whoosh but we'll just stick with the cork for now now the clone layer allows us to apply any effects we want to the original layer like coloring or something like that and the clone layer will also receive those attributes so I feel like a cool visual gag for this could be to have a clone of me pop up now I love using the keeper effect so let's go ahead and play around with that idea um, I'm gonna duplicate that up on top look up keeper and we'll drag this on there I'm gonna use add motion to animate this over I think and then we're gonna swap it from B to A so now the animation will play out going to the left Maybe I want it over to the right side. I can't decide or we could just have two of them Now the clone layer allows us to apply any effects we want to the original layer like so now I need to show that as the original layer gets the different effects then the um, the clone also receives it I should have probably copied these effects after I applied the effects to the original layer, but I didn't do that. That's okay. Um, what we'll do is actually just use an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna actually use command post to apply that. Control space, and that'll bring me command post, and we'll apply an adjustment layer just like so. Then we can go ahead and apply that over that entire clip. I'm gonna push command six, adjust it a little bit so I can add a keyframe, coloring or something like that. And we want it to show that I'm affecting the color in some way. So I'm gonna push everything to the blues or like coloring or something like that. And I want that to be a little faster. I'm gonna push control V to get the video animation and shrink that up, coloring or something like that. And then we can go ahead, add another keyframe and then we'll go forward a little bit and just reset all of these so that they're right as they should be. But we can also apply individual and let's go ahead and apply individual color grades to each of these clone layers. Click to add a keyframe and then let's push one to the red and then the other one we can push to the blue. Apply individual effects directly to the clone layer. Perfect, so that kind of gets across the idea that I had in the video of everything being uniform and then the clone layers are on their own. Now when it comes to jump cuts, I'm not a huge fan of having jump cuts. Sometimes I leave them in, but for the most part, I like to try and cover them up a little bit. So what I've done is created a preset that zooms in 30% and it also adjusts where my eye line is so that from frame to frame, my eyes match up so it's easy to find where my face is and it makes the jump cut less jarring. Okay, so I've got all my zooms in, I've got my graphics in, I've got my background in, I've got all my cuts made. Now is the time for me to build on my intro. So the first thing I want is a lot of energy up front So I like to go in and use the premium VFX uh, dynamic transitions here I usually like to kind of start out with a zoom to get that energy in so we'll go ahead and do a um, Out B long here at the beginning today. We are going to recreate the mercury effect using Apple motion I have a feeling that I want to have a nice build up to where the mercury effect shot kicks in So let's go ahead and find some music um, I actually like to use Upbeat a lot, which is free music for creators. They do have premium stuff you can get as well. Links down below, but I really like the quality of music that they have. So this is usually kind of the first place I look. Um, let's go ahead and look up hip hop. Stop it. Get some help. That's nice. So when I find this island guy I like, I just go ahead and download that bad boy. I don't spend too much time looking for music. Honestly, people aren't worried about the music for a tutorial. 
they just want to get to the content. So I'll just push Command I, locate my music folder, and import. Now we got our music. I'm going to right click, assign an audio track, and set that to music. And then I can just drag this down onto the timeline. So I always have music clashing with my voice, and I definitely want my voice to stand out. So what I've done is created a preset called music, and then just drag that on. Now, if you use the voice or music effect in Final Cut Pro, it actually carves out in the EQ where your dialogue will be sitting. So the music can actually be relatively loud and you can still hear what is being said. So I've applied that, I've dropped it to an amount of negative 50 and now we just need to find the point where the music really takes off effect, and use it straight within Final Cut Pro. First things first. So right there is where the music takes off so we'll just push M to mark that and then we'll go ahead and trim this up. Let's go ahead and drop it right here. Also if you're a patron you'll be able to download this effect. So now we can just play. Today we are going to recreate the mercury effect using Apple Motion. Also, if you're and this is where I want the music to cut off. So I push Command G. I put it in a group so I get the magnetic timeline capabilities, and I just find where I want the music to end within Final Cut Pro. First, right there. That's a perfect spot. And usually, I like to go to the very end of the song and see if it's got a a strong finish. So let's see if it's got one. Original layer, like color. Perfect, yeah, it's got that little symbol crash here, so that'll work well with the transition. We'll go ahead and trim out the middle there, and let's just see how the music is playing out. Okay, we'll just adjust it a few frames. Perfect, that's working well. Let's control S, and we'll just extend this out a little bit, little J cut action. Yeah, there we go, that sounded nice. Today we are going to recreate the mercury effect using Apple Motion. Also, if you're a patron, you'll be able to download this effect and use it straight within Final Cut Pro. First things first. So I can see if I have the Apple Motion logo maybe pop out from behind me and then just totally wipe the screen to reveal the effect. I think that would be cool. So let's go ahead, do we'll use Keeper. I use Keeper so much and just drop that directly on there. So now if I delete the background, you'll see it. It's looking pretty clean here. Um, it is showing a little bit of that microphone. We don't want that. So let's use a draw mask trim around me here. Perfect. Now we've got that trim so we shouldn't see any of that microphone appearing. Um, now let's get the Apple Motion logo which I've created a PNG for. I should just create a template for it. It would save me time. Okay, so I've dropped in this Apple Motion logo here. I'm just going to bring it in underneath me. What we'll do is extend it way out and then I'm going to push Option G to put it in a compound clip. Then I can use stuff like Add Motion without it cutting off at the edges. Apple Motion. So I want this to swipe over the whole screen, so I'm actually gonna pull it out just a little bit further. And then from here, once we've got it in place, we're gonna actually cut it so that it's in front. Drop this in front of everything, and it still has odd motion, so that's great. We can trim that down. And we're actually gonna change it from A to B to B to A. And I'm gonna drop in a little transition piece underneath it, and I think that's gonna help sell the effect as if it's getting wiped off. And also. And then from there, we can go ahead and bring in the footage that we created in motion, which I was stupid and didn't export. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Also, if you're a patron, you'll be able to download this effect and use it straight within Final Cut. So now that I have chopped up everything, I've made my intros, I've added my graphics, and once I have done that, I will export it and make my thumbnail. Now, if you're interested in how I make my thumbnails, I actually have a couple videos on Patreon showing how I've created different thumbnails over the different videos I've made. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out as well. So hopefully there is some useful insight within this long winded video. If there was, consider pressing the like button and consider subscribing as I have brand new videos twice a week. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.